Hey all, welcome back to EmpireCV.tv and our new episode for the week with the books coming out uh, this Wednesday, which is 10-5, I believe. Today, uh, well actually, before we get going, two things. This Saturday, which is the 8th, is our sale. Go to the website. If you're not on the email list, let me know. Call me. Um, email me, Facebook me. I'll make sure you get on there. But the sale is this weekend and all of the information is actually on our website if you want to know more. Also, we are having a pumpkin carving contest for October's uh, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, that would be what October's about. October is Halloween. So uh, you have to have the pumpkins in by the 29th or the 30th. That's a Saturday and Sunday before Halloween, which falls on a Monday. We're going, and we do not want them before, so please do not drop them off anytime before the 29th and the 30th. Um, carve them at home, bring them in, we're going to take pictures, we're going to put them up on Facebook, we're going to let people vote, and then we're going to give away prizes uh, to the winners. That will also be on the website and you can learn more. So today the DC stuff is finally uh, just trickling in with number twos, so you won't have to hear all the talk exclusively about DC for you Marvel uh, heads. Although for you Marvel heads there's only a few books out this week, so you're only going to get one Marvel book and two DC books along with a couple indies. Plus. We have a special guest here today who is one of the five Liefeld fans that are out there. <laughs> and he's going to tell us why he likes Hawk and Dove and why he put it on his saber. So let's get to, well, speaking of DC since we're already doing it, this was one of the books that really caught us all unaware. Animal Man number two is out tomorrow. And this one is really the one that should be a Vertigo title. And it is by Jeff Lemire, who you'll know from Sweet Tooth. And he also did Frankenstein, the Agent of Shade, number one. Animal Man number two left us off where we discover that his daughter has superpowers. She's able to talk to and animate dead animals. This one takes off right where we left off, and we start to learn more about her powers and find out that that's not the extent of them. In fact, she's just started developing them, and she's already surpassing her father, and taking him on a quest where he's going to learn more about himself and about his powers and that's where the red comes in we saw a glimpse of it in the previous issue and they're traveling to the red to get there to save essentially the world tree before the uh, the bad guys who are getting introduced to as they slowly start to slaughter humans are on their way to do it as well it was another good issue uh, the art tells a story and <laughs> it's good for the darkness but um, really read this for Jeff Lemire because he's doing a great job. Oh, and of course, we knew this one was coming. OMAC number two. I'm going to say it again. This is where you're going to get your Kirby fix. This is explosive action. You've got Cadmus Labs. You've got Brother Eye controlling a new OMAC. You've got Checkmate introduced. There's actually a big reveal at the end of this one with a character that we knew was around we knew was out there and has been a major part of the DCU as both good and bad, and he's starting to come into OMAC. So we get introduced to Checkmate, we get introduced to Sarge Steel, and we learn that Cadmus is actually a subdivision of Checkmate. They don't know it, but Checkmate is here to make sure that this OMAC project and this other monster that Cadmus created uh, get under control. Now Brother Eye has other plans. He's outside of the Cadmus range, he's outside of Checkmate, but we know that he has some connection to them and he's building kind of an army of his own. So Omak is at the head of it, real smash, bang, boom, action kind of a stuff coming off the page. It's a really fun read. Animal Man's really dark. This one is just an amazingly fun read. So, on to some indie stuff. Uh, now some serious stuff because this was a good book. Top Cow is back doing their pilot season. And what pilot season is, you're gonna get a bunch of number ones and then you can go online and you can vote for which one you want to get its own book. This is the first one to hit so far. It's pilot season, the test. And this was really right up my alley because I love books that are kind of grim. They're a grim future, no hope. This one opens up with 10 individuals waking up inside of a dome that was constructed to save the last of the human race when the outside got too bad. These guys wake up, no memories, as they slowly start trickling in and really just trying to discover what the fallout was outside, how they're going to survive inside, who each one of them are and how they relate together. But I'm a big fan of dystopias and I'm also a big fan of the Arcology books and this has both of them. And Supernatural, for those of you who are Winchester fans, although Buffy would kick the ass of both Dean and Sam Winchester together, I still enjoy both of them. We had a poll, it, it was unanimous. We follow Sam to Scotland where he meets the British 
equivalent of the hunters. And they start going on some quests together. And the only, th this is great, it's Brian Wood, as you guys will know from DMZ, you'll know from Couriers, from Demo. Really great writer, has a really good following and a really good niche, and this book really seems to fit in for him. The only complaint I had about it, I like the art, I like the scripting, I like the idea, there was no Dean Winchester in this book. And everybody knows that Dean Winchester is the reason we watch this. So, Brian, if you're watching, we need more Dean. Sam's okay, but only as a second. So, next issue, please. X-Men Schism. Number five, this one was really, really good. Davis is not on here, but they replaced him with Qbert, and Qbert's art is really gritty, it's really fast-paced and grungy, which is exactly what they're going for, because Cyclops and Wolverine are going head-to-head -head with the giant replicating Sentinel on their backs. We've got the island only filled with kids. Sentinels are all around the world, malfunctioning, attacking humans, going after mutants. The A-listers have been taken out by the new Hellfire Club, which is actually run by a bunch of 12-year-olds. Sounds silly, but it was really, really cool. They're orchestrating everything, and they're making a point, which culminates in Wolverine leaving the island, Scott staying as X-Men leader, but Wolverine taking a bunch of the kids and other X-Men with him who don't agree with the way Scott has done things. This is going to lead into the new Wolverine in the X-Men book and the new Uncanny X-Men number one. This is a major spot for you X-Men fans, so... If you haven't picked it up, at least uh, try number five because it was very well written and it was actually emotionally charged and hard hitting when Scott and Wolverine talked at the end before Wolverine leaves. So, if you're a Marvel fan, the only thing out there this week is X Men. So, you got no excuses. Thank you guys. I wanted to give you one last little thing for Halloween. If you guys come in over the weekend, it's a Monday. We know it's hard for everybody, but Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, while supplies last, we've got Halloween comics for the kids uh, and even if you're not a kid. Come on down, grab your Halloween comic. They're a lot of fun. Everything is all ages appropriate, so you can enjoy it and you can pass it on. Thank you guys very much. Uh, welcome to EmpireCV.tv, and we've been waiting to have you on here for a while. <laughs> I get that a lot. Yes, uh, and yes. what you're going to tell us about is you actually read Hawk and Dove number one. I did. And you enjoyed it. And I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. But you put number two I on did. your saber. Yeah. And why don't you tell the folks at home why? Okay. Chose to do that. Uh, I've always been a Rob Lafield fan, you know, ever since he did the uh, Buttonfly commercial. I was like, that's the guy I want to follow. And uh, I used to really like his artwork. I think everyone did. He became a big star. Oh, yeah. He was, yeah. He was, he was huge. He was, he was one huge. of the top seven, or one of the seven image guys. Yeah, I mean, how many of them? And uh, it's just kind of fun to watch the Can progression. I, I think you should get a lot closer. Um, <laughs> but just the progression is fun to watch. Like, uh, I used to want to draw comic books. Um, that was like my lifelong dream until I figured out I had no talent. Uh, but I think that's I why have, we write. I think I have more talent than Rob LaField, so I've challenged myself to like draw the first comic, like same storyline as him, and see if uh, my art looks better. And, and so uh, this gives you a chance to to look at yes. his progression. Now, yes. why don't you take a peek at issue two and tell us what you think? Okay, first off, the the cover's horrible. It looks like he's not trying anymore. Like he has like maybe three comics to draw, and this is the third one. And he's just like, uh, <laughs> okay, I've got I've got four days. Let's just kick this out. Yeah, just do Let's it. Let's just do this. Although you know what, that could be almost any cover for him. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, if you want, if you read the first one, mm -hmm. it's a lot of face like close-ups on faces. Yeah. And it's not like different. Like you watch or look like at Twilight. my phone or someone who like puts expression on faces or yeah. you know they're different faces, but these are all the same face like from a different angle. It's just over and over like faces. That's faces, why he likes the characters like Deadpool, where you just cover the entire thing. Yes, it's thing. a mask and yeah. then two white slits. Like, come on, Batman had the two white slits. It's Batman. But draw some pupils on some people. That, you know Seriously, that like this. No pupils. No. No, pupils. no, no, there are no pupils. There are no pupils anywhere. Hold on. Oh, hold wait. On. There. Oh, my God. Where? There are some pupils. That person has pupils. Yeah, but she doesn't have a mask. She kind That's of true. That. that is true. But, like, all the body types are the same. Uh, everything... Like Dead Man's muscular. Why is Dead Man all beefy? Like he's Dead Man. He should look more zombie. -ish. Yeah, he, that's the that's nice. And then look, are these guys naked? Are these naked they zombies? They actually are naked zombies. They <laughs> have no ass cracks. So when you become a zombie, you lose your ass. It becomes like cone heads, where there's be, no ass cracks. It becomes shriveled. Just like yes. a big, a big buttocks. A big but uh, <laughs> I just love how uh, like the progression is going. The action of this though, this is it is super actiony. But um, I just feel like by uh, issue five, it's just gonna be stick figures, and he's gonna be like, these are the layouts. That's all I'm doing. Just do it. You know, That's all I'm doing. He did um, a jeans commercial. I've always I loved the guns. All the guns are always just <coughs> squares, and then it'll draw, like, draw lines. So I love the like ovals. 
I want to know what kind, of, what kind of bullets that shoots. And then there's always the swords. <laughs> the swords are always god awful. You, you've yes. seen the swords and like the Shadow hands. Star. Seriously, yes. like how is that? So even I'm, taking a look at number two, you're leaving it on your saber. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this all the way through. Excellent. It's Excellent. a car ride that uh, I'm hoping crashes and then just keeps on going. Like it's just wheels and like a fiery body of a car just kind of like rumbling down the street. And Good. someone's like, wow, someone just died, but I'm going to keep watching that. You're, you're a sick individual. So. Okay. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Nice. All right, and that is the last time you will see him. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out of here, sir. We don't serve your kind here. I'm thinking about getting this, uh, this Rob Lefield book. Oh, no, take your time. Stay. Um, so I went to see Rob Lefield at Comic-Con two years ago, or actually last year. We went to his panel called um, How to Create Memorable Characters. Which was awesome. So we had to go. Um, and then he spent the time telling us how he inspired all of these other things that he had nothing to do with. And rather than tell us how to create the characters he did, he ended up drawing a fuzzy bear on the big screen, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and the thing. So obviously uh, those are memorable characters. So thank you, Rob. Thank you for all of your time. And I really am sorry for those of you who like Rob. The other four. Thank you, Matt. We didn't even give you a heads up uh, for your for your name. I'm really sorry. He's just Matt. So thank you very much, sir. That's it. Oh, I can block with that. So Keith, are you a gamer? Sad. It's sad because I feel sorry for you having to grow up with a handicap like that. Whenever you're oh ready. no! Whenever you're ready, just do it. bring the worst in me out. Uh, you can now play Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter here at Empire's Comics only a quarter. It takes you back to what, like the 80s? I mean, it, we're going to have more of these in. This is the first one to hit. Come on down and play. Um, I got nothing. I'm going back in. <laughs> you were supposed to turn around and be like, oh, oh, hello there. I'm not doing that every week, sir. Come on! To force this out of me.